hey guys and welcome back to the youtube video in this video series i will be teaching you react and we will be working on a pretty cool front end and back end application uh, which will allow us to, it's kind of it will be kind of like a app where people can post their speed runs for various video games so i know the idea is kind of not like you know uh, really advanced but it's certainly something pretty cool and easy so first of all to work with react which is a front end framework of javascript you need to head on to google chrome or any other browser that you have and just search for node.js download so you just go to the website and you can see it says downloads and you have to download the lts and not the current version because the current versions usually do not have a lot of the uh, you know even though they have the latest features they are not really good what you can do is like you can first download the lts and when the lts loses its support you can download the new current version so then you literally need to install it for your operating system so windows mac or linux if you are on windows you have to check whether you are running a 32 bit or a 64 bit operating system macs are always 64 bit so 64 64 64 and Linux is ERM or uh, ERMV7 or ERMV8 or you can download it as a TAR file so once you have done that you can also do it via the package manager and all of that cool stuff so once you have done that on windows click on add note to path it's very important now we just type out npm in actually on mac and linux you want to type out sudo npm install react and create react app now you want to install those two things because uh, uh, the, they are re required on mac and linux the reason we might type out sudo is because uh, it requires administrative privileges so now you will be on this terminal now you want to just type out npx create hyphen react hyphen app and then you just want to name it something but actually i don't want to create it in the root directory so i'll cd to my document actually no cd to my desktop then i will cd to javascript also it has to be a directory like over here you can see there is a directory called javascript and here i will just simply execute the command npx create react app and then i will call it like speed run website click enter So since I am using Yarn, the uh, way it creates the app is a little bit different. But even if you are using npm, it will work. Now you can say it's currently installing React, React DOM, React Scripts, and CRA template. So these are the things that we are going to be having in our React app. Now you might want to take care of one thing that if you face any errors then pretty much how to fix them because when you are dealing with react errors it's pretty difficult to fix a lot of the errors so what you want to do is if you run into any error then there's one very simple way to fix it that's how i fixed all of my react errors like i used to be having a ton of react errors when i first started out with react and even when i was on my windows laptop i was facing a ton of errors and then i finally managed to fix it all and even on my Mac, I was facing a lot of errors. So if you are facing a ton of errors, like configuring Webpack and Babel and stuff, you want all you want to do is go to a GitHub repository of a React project. Then you just want to CD to the directory, root directory of the project, and you just want to run the command npm install. That's all you want to do, and uh, yeah. So, because the thing is, whenever you are going to be uploading a React project, you are not going to be uploading the modules for the project, so the node modules folder. Also, just one thing, uh, I am hoping that you have basic JavaScript understanding when you are taking up this, because, yeah, you need to be having some basic JavaScript understanding. Like, you don't need to be an expert at JavaScript, but you need to be knowing, like, the basics of JavaScript. If you don't even know basics of javascript like i have this video on making a chat application 
you can pretty much look at it and i pretty much i'm also explaining every single line of code i write in there so you will be able to understand what i'm trying to tell so right now as you can see all of our entire project is being kind of you know uh, set up so now you can see it is showing us cd and then neon start now you should you all should be saying npm if it's showing yarn it's not a big of a deal first we just cd and then we simply write the command npm start literally nothing else just this one command npm start so as you can see it takes a second and then it will fire up google chrome your default browser so if you are running microsoft edge which i don't think anyone runs it's so slow or if you are running firefox or if you are running like safari or whatever you are running that browser will be fired so now what i want to do is i'm just gonna close this and i will create a new terminal window and first what i will do is i'll just cd to desktop slash javascript slash and i'm just going to get rid of this and then i'm just going to open it up in visual studio code so uh, you can see it's opened it up in vs code now one one thing that you want to keep in mind do not touch the node modules or the public folder nor any of these files all you want to do is just touch this one folder called the src folder now right now i'm in this app.js file now first i'm just going to get rid of certain files so i'm gonna get rid of app.test.js since we don't want any unit tests i'm gonna get rid of logo.svg now that was the actually let me show you what that logo.svg actually is so in this react app this spinny logo that we have that uh, the atom we don't want that so we just get rid of it so we literally we don't delete the code inside we literally just delete the entire uh, logo now just to show you what's inside the node modules folder is a ton of modules so if you actually end up like making your own react project after watching this and you want to commit that code to github do not include the node modules folder because it will take a ton of time to do all of the processing now i'm just gonna get rid of the import of the logo since we don't have it now and one thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna type out import react from react So yeah, I'm just gonna add that line over here and now I'm just going to get rid of everything inside the header. I'm gonna simply return a h1 tag called speed run. I'm just gonna call this website speed runs. Uh, you can call it anything. Uh, I'm gonna reload the page. So you can see it says speed runs. Now I'm just going to do one thing is that I'm gonna dock the window to my right hand side of the screen so like this chrome window that we had the reason why i'm doing that so you guys can see like nicely what i'm trying to do and i'm just going to make this pretty small and i'm going to make the vs code window as large as it can get so okay awesome so now we have this website called speed runs and let's just kind of like make a general design of our website as you know it so obviously we will have our input tag which where we will actually be able to write it out now you can have a text area i'm having an input it's all up to you and i'm having a button now i expect you have just some basic understanding of html also so the button i'm just gonna descend speed run i think i'm just gonna call it this so we have this button and this input field now obviously they look very ugly right now but don't worry we will be using a thing called material ui which will allow this uh, allow us to style this really nicely like i'm just saying pretty good so now let's actually build a kind of a very general kind of layout of our app so in this button i'm just gonna like beneath this i'm just gonna add an unordered list and i'm gonna add a listing tag and let's just say test so as i as soon as i save it we have this listing tag called test so let's now i want to talk to you about the fundamental thing of react or a state so state is basically like a 
it, it is a thing in react which will allow you to kind of like take a variable manipulate it but you can only manipulate that variable as long as the variable is kind of like you don't reload the page so let me actually show you and uh, it will, you will understand better so declaring the states so to do that we just step out actually before that we need to import use state from react so we just import it up top and i'm just type a const and the two variables that we want to work with are uh let's just call it messages actually not messages uh runs and send runs we pretty much type out either set or send in a use state is equals to use state and then you pass it an empty array now i'm just gonna populate it with like coding made easy and i'm also gonna type out react tutorial now you'll see when i save this and uh, nothing really happens but now if i go to test and i simply write out runs over so the variable now you can see we can refer javascript instead of html so this is a pretty cool thing called jsx so which is a combination of javascript and html so you can see this coding made easy and a react tutorial but here's the bad thing it shows the entire thing but in like this one listing tag we want to see it we wanted to see coding made easy in one listing tag and react tutorial in the other listing tag so it's actually pretty easy we can actually do this so we just type out runs dot map so map is pretty much like kind of like an append function in python we for every run we want to call an arrow function so that's basic javascript the arrow form so for every run we just want to make a listing tag in our unordered list and the listing tag should be displaying the run not the runs the run so now you can see it is coding made easy and react tutorial in two different of the listing tags and if you don't believe me if i can just add like um oh come on add this and if i just add like test block you will see it is test block coding made easy and react tutorial so you can see we just such little a bit amount of code we can do so much and i'm just gonna get rid of all of them so now what we want to do is we want to manipulate something with the input every time we click the button so first i'm just gonna type out const input and set input is equals to use state and this will just be an empty string uh, because uh, the input can be an array so over here in react there's this thing called a value so an input can be given a value now the value that we want to give our input is input now you will see what happens so over here i cannot type anything because the value of the input as we know is a blank string so even if i try to type anything it will be defaulted to a blank string so if i just make the value as test and test you can say it says test over here but i cannot type anything so that's kind of bad right we don't want that to happen so there is this thing in the input field whatever you want to say called an on change so it will kind of like trigger a change function when you type anything out in the input field so that is what the on change function does now uh, this is kind of like you know some people might think this is a little bit of a complicated code but it is pretty pretty simple so pretty much all we do is we just type an on change and we just want to put the curly quoting brackets and just gonna put an equals to so if there is an event we trigger a function that will pretty much say set the input which we have defined up top over here set the input to event dot target dot value pretty much only that that much and you can see now we can type awesome so that is one thing of about like this map function and like this on change function now what we want to do is we can actually we want to do something that we can click on the button and we can send it like we can send a message so the run so it's, we define a function for that pretty simple so 
defining uh, not that defining the function to submit a feed run it's very simple all we do is just about cons and then we need to name a function so i'm just gonna say send speed run is equals to an event i don't think we really need that but i'm gonna have it and the arrow function which will be calling certain things so what we want to do is we want to show the uh, the the speed run that we have typed with the previous speed runs so it's pretty simple all we do is type out send runs we put the parentheses and then we put the curly uh, square brackets inside and then we just type a dot 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 runs comma input so we want to show all the runs and we also want to show the input in the send runs pretty awesome and then we also want to set the input to a blank string so the input gets automatically cleared as soon as you send a run so you can see as soon as I send a speed run, uh, okay, I obviously need to bind this with my button. I always forget that, and yeah, so I'm gonna bind it with my button. And you can see as soon as I type that out, I can send a speed run. Although it's looking not that good, but you know, whatever. That's that. Now I'm just gonna have another input field, I guess. where I will be able to kind of like send the URL for my video but YouTube video where my speedrun is saved I actually am not gonna have it right now we'll see we'll see or I can pretty much just have this input and the value will be that uh, URL whatever so now what we want to do is we pretty much kind of like uh, like oh yeah we will be uh, drop the you like the video URL and people will be able to click on it but now here's the thing the app looks horrible like it just looks very bad you want to style it so there is this really cool piece of software called material ui so i'm just going to look up material ui so we first of all need to install it uh, don't worry it just requires one terminal command npm install material ui code now to my vs code and uh, hit control back tick to open up my terminal it's just a neat little shortcut i really like these shortcuts in vs code then i just type out sudo and just enter my password and it will now install material ui for us it takes a second or two but yeah so till that time let me just head to the material ui documentation and the first thing that we want is a button so we click on components and then we will pretty much search for our component so we want a button so for a button so we call a button and okay we have this button so default okay what happened okay what just happened what's this open menu yeah that's pretty cool but we don't want that we just want a button so we just do that and you can see we have some buttons we have default primary and we got these pretty cool animations to the buttons but again uh, i don't want like i'm just gonna have the secondary button it looks pretty cool so that's why so now you should get something like this and i will just pretty much kill my terminal now <laughs> and i'm gonna head over here and first of all we need to import material ui that's <laughs> that's what we need to do so what i will do is i'm going to head to my google chrome go back go back go back and over here i'm just gonna copy this one line of code and i'm gonna go over here and i will paste that the import button and now i will go over here again click on components click on button so i can go to button and pretty much i can copy which button we want i want so i can pretty much copy the source code for that button so and it, this won't work if you don't install material UI so I'm gonna copy that and paste it over here and I will okay not do that do this and I'm just gonna call it send speed run and then I will just copy 
the on click method for this button and I will paste it over here and now I can simply get rid of this button for now I'm just gonna comment it out so you will see on in react app right now we have this beautiful button and uh, where we can send a speed run but currently as you can see we have can send these empty strings which is really bad so what I can do is I can what I can do is the end like the button will be disabled so the button will be disabled if we do not have any input go away so you can see right now the button is disabled and let me reload the page so right now the button is disabled i cannot send any message but as soon as i type we get this color and we can send a message awesome so now the input looks really bad so let's just add that also mm, i'm gonna go down and we have a text field so okay first of all what i need to do go to my vs code and i need to import it i'm gonna import text field and I'm gonna switch. also if you don't know how i can do this we can hit command and tab this only happens in mac and not in windows so we have standard filled and offline i think standard looks good i i i don't really want any funky design so i'll go down and i'm pretty much going to paste this and i can simply copy this entire line of thing and i can paste it over here and i can comment this out and do that awesome so now we have this really cool kind of uh, text input field and a really awesome button so you can see just with like you don't need to do the css styling like i know everybody hates css so you don't need to do the css styling you can just do the basic javascript i know like people don't really like css because it really complicates the styling so whatever so you can see just without any styling our app actually looks so good like look at this it just we got this cool animations we got the send speed run thing and you can see it, it just looks good so whatever so what what i want to now teach you is a very important thing again in react and it is called props so a prop i think like it's pretty difficult to define a prop but i think i can define it as a class so it's like we can define a prop and we can give it certain parameters to pass so let me actually show you so we will define a prop for each of our speed runs so what i will do is i will create a new javascript file and i'm gonna call it uh, run.js now i want to tell you to install this cool extension called react redux react native yeah yes i have a react redux graphql react native step it is ES7 React Redux, React Native GraphQL snippets, and why is that happening? I don't know. Install this, it's very cool and very useful. So, I type out this thing, uh, save the file, command B, and I'm gonna open this up only. I just type out RFCE and click on enter. So, you can see we get this really cool code completion. Now, we don't really want to change any of this, we just keep it like this. Inside, we just type out props and since each of this will be a youtube video link uh we want to pass an anchor tag and now i'm not that good at html so i'm just gonna google it up so how to make a link in html hyperlinks okay good so you can see uh, there's no shame in googling in fact i think you should google that's I'm just gonna call this props dot URL. Everything must be have a URL, and uh, I think I'm just gonna. Now here's the thing. We say we have the URL. Now I can pretty much just call in like props dot URL over here. Also, it's not it's not really big of a deal. And then I can simply go over here and i can simply import run now you need to import the like the function and then the file in javascript so 
from uh, dot slash r u n right you don't need to type out js uh, react will automatically recognize it so now we have this run so i can copy run and over here i can type out run put this and i can enter the url and the url as we know will be equal to the small run so i will head over here now i'm just going to go to youtube I'm just going to get a URL of one of my videos. Uh, I think that's the best thing I can do. So I'm going to go to my your videos. Um, Studio YouTube. Alright. I'm just going to go to my one of my videos. And I'm just going to get one of these latest videos. Uh, get shareable link. Uh, link copy to clipboard. Let's see if I have saved all of the sources. Looks like that. I'm gonna go away now. All of these become a link and they will pretty much not be directed everywhere. Send the thing, click on it, and look at that. We get directed to a YouTube video link of our project. Now, here's the thing uh, you might be saying, like, uh, now I am going to give you a tiny assignment for this. Make it so that not only can you put like a YouTube video link. But you can also enter like some normal text. I'm gonna kind of help you out with that. So over here with run.js, you also want that the person should be having like some text, like even a little bit. So what I will do is I will go down here and we can kind of like add like a cons um I like I don't know what to name this. Um uh, let's just say describe input describe thing input and set so copy that paste it over here use state and I'm gonna make this one now not the best variable names in the world but I can't help it whatever now what I'm gonna do is go to run.js and after each link each of the things should also be having like a h5 and they should be having a drops dot message okay what is the name identify expected what do you mean okay i think that was just something and i think yeah that's all so I think we can also have it up but I don't care about it now like I'm not really looking at the styling and uh, just one last thing I'm just going to add a hr tag over here and a hr tag over here okay now what's the problem chase access one parent element now I hate this in VS code it just takes a ton of time that like oh yeah, I don't have any error but it still will take a lot of time to fix it so now I'm just going to go down so right here we have got the url but now here's the thing i want to have another text field uh, i know uh, like surely there will be some other awesome way to do this but i am not like some master in react so you know so the value of this text field will be equal to the describing input that we have now here's the thing i've never even created this app before so it's really difficult for me to do it right now and I'm go just going to do one thing is I'm going to change the label to describe and I'm going to change this to URL now obviously we'll change this later on I am not that you know so now after we want to do something with that so I'm just going to make another function I don't think I'm const send describe Describing. Actually, you know what? I think we can pretty much just do it over here. You know? Uh, yeah, that is actually a very good. Inst instead, like with the speed run sending, we can also send a describing input. That's the best way to do it. Otherwise, we will have to make another button and everything will just become too complicated. So, describing input, set describing input. So, set describing input will be used. And paste that and we, it will be equal to dot 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 uh, what is it yeah dot 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 describing input 
comma the end not that comma the okay value oh yeah okay okay now this is something uh, difficult to understand the value will be the describing input but the thing will be that okay okay um so even like the the text field has another value but the problem is that like each of the things should also be having that okay you know what yeah i'm just gonna take this that paste it here okay not the best way i'm gonna work with this uh descriptions just copy that paste it here and obviously it has to be camel casing so now pretty much uh, instead of runs it will have descriptions and the other thing will be the describing input okay i don't think if this will work i'm just tying it out and the set describing input will again be a blank string cause uh, we have pretty much added something so yeah and obviously we will need to change one more thing the url and the message copy that copy that and the message will be equal to the uh, describing input url and describing okay so i'm not very much gonna add in another of my video url head to youtube uh, i should have kept it open so i on youtube and i'm gonna go to my videos so studio youtube and let's just take any video uh, let's just take the rock paper scissor get shareable link go to react app put that okay you know what happened okay okay so there seems to be an issue um so there seems to be an issue so it is it's kind of like the url that it's getting is like okay i get it i get it i get it so let me actually try it out again i think i got it what is happening okay, like uh, okay what happened rock paper scissor okay it's certainly a bit of a problem so here's the problem um the over here as you can see i've done this now the problem that i'm occurring that is occurring is that yeah setting the first text field to the input and the second to the describing input but the problem is in the run.js where we set the message now each of them have a message and each of them have a url now down below when we call it the prop the message is the describing input and when we are doing this we are pretty much setting the describing input to the descriptions and the describing input so that's the problem now that's kind of a long fix i guess let me have a look okay that's one thing that i need to do no that was not what i wanted to do Okay, so it's kind of like a little bit of a problem. Okay, let me see if I can add a BR way or at least. And that's not some good URL. Uh, I'm sorry, but okay, so that's only a problem. I thought that there was some other thing. So, 
that run so just copy and input okay i think i'm getting it what's the problem so i'm like i'm sending a description I'm sending a description and I'm getting the describing input. But when I'm sending, I'm looking at the description. Okay, gotcha. We are we are sending the description. Okay, I don't think I can fix this in this video. Um, uh, whatever. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of this this these two states like we will probably have a look at it in a later video but not right now I'm going to get rid of this this and get rid of this block and do this all right save this head over here url uh, i obviously have the url right here get shareable link to react app do that and would you look at that we have a url whatever i do this okay okay Wait, what just happened Reload the page so you can see how that is and i don't want the button to be in the next line and comment that out and yeah so that's it for the this video like i could have like a picture of a gun or something but probably in the later videos so that's it for this video uh, i'm probably gonna be doing some more react tutorials uh, in the later videos actually we have we had to integrate it with like a server yet so that's something that we, i'm going to be doing now let me have a look at my video recording okay that's quite long so uh i'm gonna integrate it with the server with firebase that's definitely something that you want to see so you know that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this video if you did like and subscribe to the channel i know it's been a little bit of a long but kind of busy and i was pretty much learning react so you know that's it for today guys and i'll see you in another youtube video